Hi, my name is Gwen. I'm a pediatric occupational therapist with Emerge Pediatric Therapy. Today, we're going to talk about ways to incorporate proprioceptive play um, at home, especially as the weather's getting colder, you might not want to get outside, or maybe it's rainy. So here are a few ideas of ways that you can expand these play schemes or easily alter activities to provide some of this proprioceptive input. Proprioceptive input is a term that we use as OTs frequently. You might also have heard it mentioned as heavy work. This is resistive input to the joints that's providing a lot of body awareness. So a lot of times you'll see increases in body awareness, awareness of where we are in space following some of this proprioceptive input. Um, so there are a few ways you can do this. A lot of times we mention pushing, pulling, crashing, those types of inputs. In this clip, you see a child pulling two weighted snakes. Um, this is a good way to provide some of that input. If you use weighted objects, you can push or pull them. Sometimes in activities will provide more resistance by being like, oh, it's so hard. I can't quite pull it. Ways like that to incorporate that into play scheme. So if your child is playing with anything really like it could even be a pillow um, and you're like oh this is so heavy and then the child's like Ugh, what's wrong with you and then they help you out by pulling that up um generally we're using something that has some weight so it could be a weighted ball um it could be a backpack another way to incorporate some of this pushing and pulling is using a laundry hamper like you see in this clip um, we had some weighted objects inside and we had a ramp structure that we had set up. So using things where you're creating more um, difficulty. So we have to put in some more effort in order to complete the task. So we kind of initiated this being like, oh, this is so hard. I can't quite push it. Can you help me? And then the child comes over and immediately is like, okay, I can help. Um, pushing that up the ramp. But the key is to incorporate these into the play activities that you're doing. So we were rolling things up and down this ramp. So then we put them inside and we're trying to push it up to the top so we can kind of try again. In this clip, you see a child being pulled by the handles of a zoom ball. So you see him having the sustained grasp as he's sitting to be pulled. Um, this is providing a lot of that deep pressure as he's using a lot of those like proximal trunk stabilizing muscles, as well as maintaining that solid grasp on both handles. In this clip, you see this child using um, tongs, which provide resistance to those fine motor um, muscles in our hands. Um, he's using them to assist him in ripping paper, which also has some resistance to it as well. So even just using two hands to rip paper or pull things apart will be key. Raising items onto a higher surface, so we'll use pillows or a lot of times in clinic we'll use blocks to, to raise things up or stacked mats, but you can easily use like put them on top of the couch or um, stack pillows and put the object on there and maybe position things lower. So we're having to go up into a tall kneel or a half kneel position to increase the amount of muscles that we're using all together. So here you see us kind of popping up onto those the tall kneel to provide some more input as we're teaming more proximal muscles to stabilize. Crashing is another great way to provide some of that input. You can do that by scooping up your child to plop them onto the couch or onto a bed or a pile of pillows. In this clip, you see a therapist plopping or crashing, assisting to, the child to crash into our foam pit. In this clip, you see a child trying to navigate and crawl over the foam pit, but this can easily be recreated at home by placing a bunch of squishy objects like pillows, couch cushions, blankets. So we're having to navigate over them. Um, if you add another layer by adding crawling, that provides some different input as well. In this clip, you see this child climbing up the ramp through a tunnel. So adding that, that ramp creates some difficulty and adding crawling, we're getting weight bearing through our upper extremities and our knees. And we're having to stabilize a lot with our core. This is encouraging teaming of more muscles for stability, which is providing more of that proprioceptive input. A great way to ease transitions is giving a child a job. So in this clip, you see this child 
carrying a bin full of animals from one room to the next room because that's what we're gonna be using. So that is providing some of, it has some weight, so it's providing some of that proprioceptive input to the body to aid in calming our nervous system. Biting or chewing on objects can be a great way to provide input. In this clip, you see this child using a tri-chew, which is a resistive chewing toy or tool. Um, and that's providing a lot of good input, proprioceptive input to our jaws. You can recreate this with use of crunchy or chewy snacks. So crunchy snacks like veggie straws, pretzels, things like that can provide a lot of that good input to your jaw as well as chewy, like um, fruit chews, things along those lines that we're having to work a little bit harder to kind of break down by chewing, provide a lot of that input to our jaws as well. So you might see some children that are seeking some of this proprioceptive input also are seeking out these crunchy, chewy snacks to assist with regulation. Thanks for watching. If you have questions or concerns about your child's sensory processing skills, reach out to us at EmergePediatricTherapy.com.